Okay, so um, that was a lot to think about. You might want to pause and see if you can follow the math and see if you understand that calculation. Uh, whether or not you do, it's also this calculation has gone through at some level in the notes. Okay, now I want to talk about one more thing, which is I want to talk about photons uh, or particles of light um, and, uh, and they're the four momenta of photons. So let me clear the board and do that. There you go, my beautiful and complicated math. Um, can go. And we will think about the four momentum of photons. So here we go. So uh, we, we've said that the four momentum is the energy over C, the x component of the momentum, and zero and zero if we're just thinking about things that are moving in the x direction. So this is the four momentum of something moving in the x direction. Now, we said that the rest mass is given by E squared over E over C squared squared minus PX over C squared. Actually, I just, I'm not going to call this PX. We're just going to remember that our momentum are only going in the X direction. Here. Okay, so uh, this is the ma mass of an object. Now, what if, what if we set the mass equal to zero? Now, setting the mass equals to zero is really strange because we think that E is gamma m c squared, and we think that p is gamma m v. So if the mass is zero, surely the momentum would be zero. And if the mass is zero, surely the energy would be zero. And that's, that argument seems reasonable, except that the mass could go zero to zero as gamma goes to infinity, and that would solve our problems. Um, but let's, let's ignore this fact for a minute, and let's just ask, what would happen if mass equals zero? Well, if mass equals zero, this would imply that E over C equals P, that the momentum and the energy are equal in uh, dimensionless units. Now, if I have that situation, then my four vector looks like this. My four momentum looks like E over C, E over C, zero, zero. Okay, so this is a four momentum I've written down where I've set the momentum component equal to the energy component or the x component equal to the time component. Well, what properties does an object like this have? Well, first of all, the mass is zero because if I take this squared and subtract this squared, obviously I get zero, so this has no mass. But there's another thing, which is that the velocity of this object is the p component over the e component. The velocity is this component over this component, but these components are the same, and so this velocity is C. I think I've written that slightly wrong. P C squared over E. So the velocity is this component over this component is beta. That's beta of 1. If I multiply by C, then I get uh, go from beta to velocity, and velocity is the speed of light. Or beta. So this is also equivalent to saying beta is 1. So the nice thing, the, the interesting thing here is that under this postulate that this is the momentum and that the momentum is a four vector. So if you make the postulate that this is the four momentum and the four momentum is a four vector, so it has this invariant property like this, then setting the mass to zero ensures that you move at the speed of light. So any massless particle moves at the speed of light. This is a consequence of these very, very simple postulates. Okay, so that's good. Uh, that's interesting. We know photons have zero rest mass and move at the speed of light, so that so everything's working out very well. Now we can imagine doing experiments. For instance, you can imagine having a photon traveling this way and a photon traveling this way, and have this photon have energy E and this photon has energy E. Okay, so this is the before picture. And now the, imagine these photons interact with each other and create an object there. 
what would be the properties of that object. So here's an object. What are the properties of this object? So, so this is the before picture. This is the after picture. Well, let's compute it. This has, this has four momentum, E over C, E over C, because it's moving in the x direction, 0, 0. This has four momentum. Well, its energy is also E over C. They have the same energy by assumption. But now it's moving in the negative x direction, so this is negative E over C, 0, 0. So the total four momentum of these two vectors, of these two uh, momentum, if I add them together to make one object, that object that's left ought to have four momentum 2e over c, add together these components, and add together these components, uh-oh, e over c and minus e over c, something with zero momentum, zero, zero. And this is an object with mass e with mass m equals 2e over c squared. This is an object with mass 2e over c squared. Uh, so if I have two photons of energy e and they collide and create an object, that object will have mass 2e over c squared. A more generic case, much more generic case, is you have two photons coming in in the before picture, and in the after picture, you have two particles flying apart, V, M, V, M, where this is moving at minus V and that's moving at plus V. So this is another case that's very common, and this is like, this could be an electron, and this could be a positron, and as long as these two photons have enough energy to generate an electron and a positron, then they can combine to create the electron and positron. Um, and then again, if we add up the things, what do we have here? Here we have, I might be going down below the bottom of the page, so let me just move my diagram up a little bit. So here the total momentum, the total momentum here is 2e over c, 0, 0, 0. And I should write this out a little bit. Let me write it out a little bit. Let me be a little bit more careful here. Let's call this e1. Let's call this e2. Then the total energy is e1 plus e2 over c. And the total momentum, well, e one's in the positive direction. e2 is in the negative direction. So it would be e1 minus e2 over c would be the total momentum. 0, 0, because e, this photon has, this photon here has energy E1 over C and it has momentum E1 over C, and this photon has energy E2 over C and momentum negative E2 over C. And here, in this case, when I think about the electron-positron pair, <coughs> this one has energy gamma m c squared over C, so gamma m c. This one, this is now v1 and v2, so this is gamma 1 mc, and this one is going to be gamma 2 mc. And then the, the velocities are acting in the opposite direction, so again we're going to have gamma m v1 in the negative direction plus gamma 2 m v2, this is supposed to be gamma 1, 0, 0. And you can see that there is a, uh, a set of constraints where the energies of these two photons have to be enough to create the mass of a proton plus the mass, or mass of an electron and mass of an anti-electron. So it has to have enough energy here to create that. But then the momentum here, the total momentum of these two photons, has to equal the total momentum of these two uh, particles, the electron and the positron. And this interaction, two photons going to positron and electron, happens all the time in the laboratory and also in space. In fact, we observe large sources of electrons and positrons 
in uh, astrophysical objects where there are large magnetic fields, like for instance uh, pulsars and uh, black holes that are accreting material, generate enough energy to create photons that are high enough energy that they create electron-positron uh, pairs abundantly.